My common-law husband is in his early 50s, and I'm in my 40s. We stay in good shape and exercise regularly. We have lived together in many countries for nine years. We met in a different country from where we previously lived. We had an unplanned child two years ago, and they have changed everything. We love our toddler a lot. I quickly realized that my husband wasn't good with money enough to support us if we weren't living from paycheck to paycheck. He does make more than enough though. In the past, when business was slow, we may have had to cut back on spending, but I was the one who held the line. As a stay-at-home mom who worked full-time, I quickly felt stupid having to ask for every penny and declare where it all went. On occasion, he was glad to give me money to buy things that my daughter and I needed. But most of the time, he thought it was funny to be mean. A friend recently said something about it and asked if he has always been like this. I replied, well, I didn't think anyone noticed. I thought it was just me. Therefore, it did support how I felt. Afraid of spending money, I only buy food and gas for myself. Although it's expensive. After working as a bartender and saving money, I invested almost a whole Bitcoin in our child's future in 2000. He refused to touch it, so I begged him. But whenever he talked about it, he was proud of trading it. It could only be accessed by him. He repeatedly told me he wouldn't trade or touch that money. And all of it was gone in less than a year. You can do the math to see what would have happened if he hadn't traded my almost worthless Bitcoin. I ended up having to raise two kids. It is not good for anything, not even sex. Although I didn't have anything to do with the end of our relationship, I started to hate and resent him. Multiple times, he lied to me about the smallest, silliest things. That includes the money, and if he can lie so easily about that, what else can he lie about? With each passing day and how our life was going, I would get increasingly angry and take it out on him, and vice versa. Not nice to look at. I quickly went from being a happy, carefree girl to an angry, negative person. Although everything happened, I never felt like he left. He always made me feel loved and wanted. I would never even think about cheating on him. Unfortunately, this year has been especially hard because we live in a country where drugs are cheap, really good, and easy to get. He didn't come home for a few days around New Year's and got weird answers like, what, all I want to do is party. He thought I was crazy for even asking him where he was or that leaving your wife and child to party for a few nights was normal without coming home. Even though I wanted to leave at this point, I had to stay because I was financially dependent on this person in a foreign country where I live. As parents of a child, you know that sometimes it's better to stop beating a dead horse and get things done. He disappeared during the night of one of the weddings I was at while I was out of town. Not paying attention, I thought he was angry that I was at our friend's wedding. There was no such thing as that though. That night, he met a new girl at work and enjoyed fucking her in my car in the parking lot a few hours later, while my good friend watched our child. She didn't know anything, but I didn't believe her. Now, a week later, I'm still on my trip, and my husband sends me a naked picture for the very first time. When I asked him about it, he immediately deleted the message and said, Oh, I'm sorry. Later, I jokingly asked him who the lucky girl was, not realizing he had taken it for someone else. Later, I flew home. The usual fight happened on the way home. As usual, we broke up during this fight. It was the same as before I left. We went home and continued living our lives together in our house. We cooked meals together and had sex one time without any protection. The same thing happened every other day. He constantly showed affection by hugging me. Do these words make it sound like we broke up with you? That didn't make sense to me. During this time, he also told me about this job that his married clients were offering him, who got him a car and were involved in watching their homes. It seemed odd because who would lend their house and car to people they barely know? Later, my friend asked how I was feeling about the breakup. You know what I mean? Did you end the relationship? Do you know? So this is how I found out we broke up. Kicker was my husband's answer. I sent him a text message saying, We're breaking up. What were you thinking? He laughed and said, How could you not know? Like, 
stunned beyond belief. Like, I'd still sleep with him if I knew we were breaking up? Not the least. Would you stay and cook at my house? Do not believe it. He completely abused and used me without any regard, attempting to experience the best of both worlds. Disgusting beyond belief. After a few days of driving around in this car, he started sleeping only at this house. While looking for more information, I knew something wasn't right with this house and the car. When I go to coffee with the same friend who asked me about the breakup, she asks if my husband will work the next day. I told him no, it was next week. Oh, she said, that's not what he said. Our husband told me the next day that he was leaving early the next morning to go work two hours away from here. Additionally, he was required to be there the following day due to an urgent matter. Since he had worked there before, this wasn't unusual, but the timing was off. The fact that he had to leave right away was annoying, because he kept saying he needed space, but he only had it for four weeks while I was gone. The cake, the little party we had planned. It was his birthday, but he didn't want to celebrate it this year. Strange, since he loves being admired and the center of attention. Telling me 12 hours earlier that he was leaving town for a week was rude, and he needed to respect my time more. He almost left without giving us any money to last a week. We needed to get groceries, and my car was out of gas. It took me begging and crying to get $60, which would have only paid for gas. He quickly turned around and gave me another $40, and when I told him I was going to town and asked his friends for assistance. I live in one of the world's most expensive countries, but it wasn't like that when I landed here five years ago. You can tough gas and food for two weeks, Let's spend $100 and not worry about an emergency. I planned my $100 and budget. Before the week started, I put $10 and in the car and didn't drive anywhere I didn't have to. I only bought what I needed for groceries and saved the rest in case of an emergency. Rather, luckily and by accident, I found out that night after he left that he wasn't working in the town where he said he was, but in the big city where the airport is. When I asked him where he was, he told me he was in bed the next day which is when he finally answered. His new girlfriend had just flown back in to spend the week with him, but he was in bed with her. That girl is married and has three kids with two different baby daddies. She lives in a different country and owns the house where her husband is staying. Still, I don't have a grudge against her. She only believes what my convincing husband told her. He keeps up his little act for me by saying he's working when he's just doing fun things with her, like going out to eat and staying at Airbnbs. In the meantime, I had to beg for $100 and... The Wi-Fi where he's staying isn't very good, so he can't video call. Whatever the reason, we've always video called, even when it was bad. This is especially true now that we have a child. He suddenly decided to come home at night, which was weird after a week of barely talking to each other, which was probably the least we'd ever discussed. He drove home after dropping off his new girlfriend at the airport. He stays at my house hours the next night. Meanwhile, all I know is that we broke up. I got to bed early that night and had to get up before midnight to go to the bathroom. I checked the child's room to see if he was there and found him sleeping. Later, I saw his phone lying there, staring at me. The voice told me to look at you. The voice kept talking but I told it to stop several times because I could not believe what my husband told me. It kept saying something though. I then took out my phone. Honestly, this is the only time in our relationship that I've wanted to steal his phone and listen in. Around 20 minutes in, he woke up and realized I had it. Within 20 minutes, I found pictures and messages that have completely changed my life. Not just his new girlfriend, but several other women on the go. He texted them all the same messages, just copying and pasting them. He also sent them pictures of himself with our child and listened to all of them praise him as a good dad. Furthermore, he admitted having sex with someone else before his current girlfriend. I saw all of the mean, explicit messages and pictures that they had been sending each other for a month. I had no feelings when I saw him kiss and hug another girl, which made this a lot easier because I didn't have to worry about how I felt. The fact that I found out he cheated on me when things were going well in our relationship was probably the very worst part. 
After he caught me using his phone, I wish I had thought to change his passcode. That would have shocked him, trying to get mad at me for going through it. I feel like I violated his privacy law. Does that help your case? But I didn't cheat was all he kept saying. However, I did not cheat. I mean, dude, I just read your phone. Hey, come on. Doing what you see in movies and throwing his clothes at him was the most satisfying part. Since I'm getting older, I need to get an STD test. Since then, we haven't talked about anything. He hasn't shown much regret and only admitted what I know. It's not helping my healing to see or hear about him every day. His girlfriend's house is only five minutes away, but he comes and goes as he pleases at ours, completely disregarding my boundaries and treating me badly. He has completely avoided all responsibility, leaving me to care for the house, the dogs, and everything else that comes with being a full-time mom. I can't pay for daycare or babysitters, so I don't have any free time unless he has her. Unfortunately, babysitting is getting in the way of my plans to start working again. Everyone here is busy with their kids or working full-time, so friends and family can't take my child. This place doesn't support me, I don't have any support in my current country either. I probably only have support in the country I just returned from, but I don't have any money left. He is trying to be a good dad, so I'm staying here. It would be impossible to tell my daughter I did everything if I didn't try. However, his support will end soon if history repeats itself, which it already has begun to do. Fun fact, he did the same thing to his ex-wife when we met. He said hubby and his ex-wife weren't broken up when we met. This site has been very helpful for people who have survived a dollar dollar whole dollar, and I hope some of you can share your story and give me some advice, especially when child sharing. I've been working on this for two weeks, and I hope it helps you find something. I disagree with co-parenting with him since I still feel hurt by this. I sincerely hope the new job will provide me with the time, space, and money I require to progress. Currently, he is still paying for our house and supporting us. What a bad situation I'm in. It becomes clearer as I write this. His bad behavior causes our family to fall apart, but he is free to act irresponsibly until he wants to be a parent and see his child. As a result, I'm raising her properly as a responsible adult, and when daddy steps in, he's the hero. One more annoying thing. As a result of the death of one of our best common friends in this foreign country, we find ourselves in this strange situation. We're all mourning together, which has made things very weird and hard. I've been married to my husband in 58 since I was 19. That's more than 30 years. Some things have gone wrong in our marriage, but we've worked through them and survived the hard times. The last seven or eight years have been the hardest. We were both on medicines that affected our libidos, and we went from having a sex twice a week to maybe once a month. I went to my doctor to get my libidos fixed, but he never did. It's been six years since he and I last had a sex. I still got hugs and kisses from him for about three years, but then it stopped. He spent more and more time with his fishing or dog park friends. He would go for beers, camp, swim, etc. Everyone else was invited, but not me. If I had asked to go, I wouldn't have liked these people because they are too loud, have different political views, etc. He would also park my car and take his friends' cars. But I was stuck at home without a car, so I would sit on the couch, feel down, and gain weight, which was fine with him. Always being aware of where I was and what I was doing. I got tired of being stuck and fat all the time, so I started to lose weight and take short trips with my sisters. Before I went, I would ask him if it was okay and if he wanted to go with us, their husbands did too. He said no all the time, and they would be upset when I got home. Things were getting worse in March, because he didn't want to do anything with me. When we made plans, he would forget about them and make other plans instead. I wouldn't want to reschedule because he was iced out. I could never get him on the phone, and when I did, I was lucky to have him on for more than a minute or two. I walked my sister's dog and cared for their house for 10 days. One day, the fiancé told me he wasn't feeling well, so I stopped by and brought him soup. I had an appointment with the doctor, 
and even though I had lost over 100 pounds, I was dressed up a bit. He told me I looked like a whore because my breasts were sticking out, and I was wearing my profile picture outfit of an off-the-shoulder top, jeans, and low-heel slides. Nothing that says modern-day streetwalker. It made me cry and I didn't talk to him for two days. When I got home on a Sunday after my sister got home, I found an unidentified letter in my mailbox. The letter and the envelope were tight and I almost threw them away because I thought they were just junk mail. It was a week before my 35th wedding anniversary I discovered my husband had been seeing a woman from Haddad Park for two years. It said where they hang out that they are together when he says he is hunting Sadanoi. I understood why I wasn't invited and why he stole my car. I knew about her because they were friends and he used to talk about her a lot, but then stop. He would put her down by saying things like she's not pretty very political etc. And she was married. My heart broke, I thought about it for a few days, did some research and found that he spent 90% of his free time talking on the phone with her about 7 to 8 times a day. For 2 plus hours a day, I looked through our phone logs from 2 years ago and saw hundreds or even thousands of calls between them. After 4 days I lost it and went to face her. I slammed her door and yelled at her that if she was so womanly as to sleep with a married man, she should be so womanly as to talk to his wife. The door wouldn't open. I sent my husband a copy of the bring tape he knew before I got home because my sister listened when I talked to him. I threw the letter at him and asked, why? Why her? What does she have that I don't? And so on. He gaslit me. They are just friends and like the same things. He won't give her up because it's my fault that I'm lazy and don't do anything, etc. He talked down to me like I was trash in his shoes. On top of everything else, he wanted me to apologize to her for making her feel bad in public because it was early in the morning and many people were out. I don't think so. I asked for a divorce, but he said no. I also asked to talk about things, but he said no again. This was the first Mother's Day that I didn't get anything. We were supposed to eat together the next night, but he had to drop off some goods and leave at 5.3. I asked him when he would be back, because I wanted to wait to eat with him, and he said no more than an hour. By 8, I finally texted him and asked, Hey, what time are you coming home? I want to eat while you wait. 20 minutes later, he texted back. He walks in at 9 a.m. with a bad attitude and says the people he dropped off were nice enough to take him out to eat. I made a stink face and got up to fix something and he asked me what was wrong with my attitude. I told you that you couldn't text me. Oh, I forgot, he says. I replied, yeah, you do forget about me a lot these days. He gets angry and starts throwing things at me from 30 years ago and from now on. I'm done. I was unemployed, but I went return to dork and may get a second job. I have a savings account and I'm looking for a place to move into. I filled out the divorce papers twice but I can't get them filed. He wants to be husband of the year, but not physically. When I act like I don't care, he wants to be husband of the year though. So I put a GPS tag in his car. Is that right? Not really, but I want to ensure I get all the proof I need because I do not have an agent with me, which is why I put it in his car. I didn't see it again at work for three hours. Was he going to the park? Right to her house? After an hour and a half, he returns in a bad mood toward me. I've had a terrible two days and needed help, but no one has given it to me, not him, not my friends, not my family. And I'm sick of it all. If someone needs help, support, or an attaboy or girl, I'm there for them 100% of the time. In any way I can be, no matter what. For me, yes, crickets. In my first week on the job, I worked 106 hours, which is a lot. Add in a dementia patient, and it's a crazy schedule. I was awarded Employee of the Month, which made me very proud. I left the certificate on the table, and he didn't say and said nothing shot to my family. But they didn't say anything either, so maybe they don't feel the same way. Thursday was the death of my first patient, and it was very hard. I had been working with this family since the beginning, and had now changed to five days a week. You're supposed to keep your distance, but you're also human. A hug or an, I'm sorry, would have helped, but nothing. I'm here like people, but everyone is calling me about their problems. He's more worried about his whore. My family doesn't say anything. I want to be strong and fake it until I make it, but I think I will break it. I did it.
It was a bittersweet moment because I loved him and missed the man I married. I miss the man who danced to our song in the kitchen with me or remembered the little things. But what I won't miss and have grown to hate is the man who will lie to my face, tell me to FXXK off, and then act like nothing's wrong the next morning. Who tells me he's going to the park but goes straight to her house? This was my last straw. On Father's Day, he told me he was going to the sporting goods store. I told him it wasn't a problem because I had worked the night before. Stopped at the store on my way home and cooked a roast for him he wanted. It would be ready in an hour, so he left. Does he go to the shop? Nuo. Going straight to hers. And leave their car in the garage. I call him, but there's no answer, so I text him. Since I was dumb, let's talk, so please go home. I know you're not at the sports store. I wait 20 minutes, but nothing happens. So I gave her a call. If you want my husband, he's at your house, hiding in the garage. You've won. I'm done. Best of luck. I'm done. Go get his dog and his stuff. He doesn't want a woman who has loved and worked for him for 35 years to say, I'm done. You've won. After 20 minutes, he came in with a Walmart bag and ticket. As if I were stupid. Because of her job, her phone is very important to her. She feels bullied and might have to change her number. I didn't say anything mean. I just told them dinner was ready. I believe a friend brought him dinner. I ate some for my son and me and threw away the rest. The next day, I had a tumor removed. He had to drive me, so he couldn't ask me how I was or the surgery went. When I got in the car, he said, I'm hungry. I just shrugged and told him I had to go home. I went and did my paperwork on Tuesday. I had to tell my kids first, which I did over the weekend. My friend will serve him on Tuesday night while I'm at work. I have until August 31 to move out of this house because he had her in it while I was in Colorado. I will not stay here. If anyone in the Central Empire, SoCal, Riverside area, Corona, Elsinore, Chino, Norco and nearby, knows of a casita, back house, mother-in-law suite, etc. That is affordable, has two bedrooms, a small yard, and is good for a small dog, she's six pounds. Please let me know.